Hey, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome here to a new year, 2026, the first day of 2026, January 1st. It is 11.31 a.m. California time here. Uh, latest activity does show some movement into Hawaii. Looks like a couple newer quakes. Also a 3.5 hiding there across the Indonesia area along with a 2.7. Some larger movement up into the Alaska area late last night. Had a decent size aftershock activity with a swarm of other quakes there in the region where that seven pointer struck here. Southern Yukon area, right around the Alaska border. Here's the uh, look at the earthquake sequences there that have been really stirring up there uh, since the seven pointer struck. That's a uh, decent size event. 7.0 back in uh, the sixth of this month. Yesterday's uh, aftershock, the second largest there. Uh, so far, the um, largest aftershock is going to be a 5.8 uh, that happened just one day following that seven pointer. Uh, could see some larger activity out here. You know, it comes and goes when it uh, when you get these larger quake activity events. Uh, but this is definitely a, a decent uptick here in the last 24 hours. Again, it started off here with that uh, 5.7, and they've got a you know a couple other smaller. Uh, not really smaller, but moderate size aftershocks following that uh, 5.7 there from last night. Keep an eye on this because it's definitely got uh, some interesting uh, sequences going on here as far as the elevated um, magnitudes, you know, almost almost uh, a month later here. Uh, so we'll, we'll watch that closely. Uh, Alaska in general looking pretty active here with, uh, we got about 100, and, well, 100 earthquakes out here in the last 24 hours a number of those through the Cook Inlet area as well. And as you can see, quite a few above the 2.5 level. There's this earthquake here from yesterday, uh, four-pointer. But uh, in general, things kind of stirring up out there across the Alaska area. Uh, yesterday, we've seen a bunch of activity here across the Kamchatka area and down through the Japan region. Looks like that momentum and pressure is kind of working its way around the plate boundary. Uh, not so much going on there across the Pacific Northwest for now. Northern California, a um, couple more earthquakes, including one more up outside of uh, Bernie yesterday. Was it yesterday or uh, one day before that? We had a 4.9 and then a 4.7 a couple days before that there near Susanville. Interesting events out here as well. Just a, a swarm of uh, somewhat unusual activity. Looks like there was one over here across the southern end of the Cascadia as well. Uh, the tremor events have been increasing down here across southern Oregon recently. Let me show you guys the um, the slow slip event map here, which uh, shows us that there's um, all these events here from yesterday underneath southern Oregon. 189 epicenters of slow slip events there. That's um, you know a, a definitely a, a decent uptick. Most of the trimmer here has been uh, confined there across the southern end. Uh, the Bay Area of San Francisco, pretty quiet. A couple earthquakes there. Uh, off of the San Andreas Fault, one on the Pacific side and one on the North American side. It's just opposite here of the uh, Parkfield section. We've been getting a lot of earthquake activity here along the western side of the San Joaquin Valley, indicating that this thing may be close to uh, maximum pressurization there along the Parkfield section of the San Andreas Fault. Uh, considering we've seen a lot of linear activity, you know, running parallel with the plate boundary. But this area is locked, and uh, we should see a six-pointer on it pretty soon. It's got these uh, regular reoccurrence intervals there every 20 to 22 years, and our last one was back in 2004. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, now I do have that earthquake there from yesterday, but there was a lot more happening there in Yellowstone than what is showing up on the map. So we do uh, got to go double-check the... Um, uh, the stations here and i'll show you guys there's the activity from yesterday 2.5 going to be the bigger quake quite a few other quakes in there as well probably up around the two range uh, looks like some more overnight and even some more this morning here uh, so maybe a start of a swarm nothing you know nothing major or intense but there's definitely more earthquake activity showing up here on the seismograph stations there around yellowstone than what's uh, being reported we'll see and they haven't really got to those today uh, unless they well they, uh, it is New Year's. I forgot. Nobody's in office there. Uh, oil fields out here. Texas still rock and rolling. Nothing big going on there for now. Uh, let's see what else we got around the globe. Uh, still a lot of newer activity here. There's that earthquake in the southeast Pacific or uh, the uh, eastern 
southeastern uh, Indian Ocean out there, out there in the ridge boundary. This is a, a, a divergent zone that kind of separates a plate, creates a new, uh, some new oceanic crust out there. You can bear, you can see it pretty much there on uh, a lot of the uh, patterns out here. Some strike slip boundaries out there as well. This one looks like it may have occurred uh, out in one of those strike slip areas. It's kind of fracturing right here and then creating more seafloor out in this fashion. You can definitely see them out there. These lines are showing up quite nicely. Uh, nothing else there today. Let's see here. Some moving out around the uh, Gulf of Aden out there, it looks like. 4.6 this morning. That's fairly recent. Not uh, a whole lot of activity around the Mediterranean for now. Got a swarm of activity up in... Ooh, where is that? Is that going to be around... Let's see exactly where that's at. I really wish the USGS would have that. Maybe up around Germany or so, it looks like. Poland, maybe? Hard to tell exactly uh, where that's at, but somewhere up in this region. Maybe Germany area, it looks like. I don't see a whole lot of activity up there, but we have a number of twos and threes, including some uh, four-pointer out around Iceland area. Uh, seeing some further escalation of quakes around the Caribbean plate here, it looks like. Across the southern end and also around the Puerto Rico trench. This looks a little bit more active than normal. Got a pretty good cluster across the Prue-Chile trench as well. Just kind of watch things here, see how it plays out. Um, space weather activity, and then we'll get into weather and then also an update here on Chomper. Got a little bit of flaring going on here right now. Some sea flare activity from an earth-facing side sunspot area. That's been flaring a little bit, and uh, that's the source of... That large M flare that's going to potentially stir up a G2 class storm here in a couple nights. Now, this is a aurora forecast here for tomorrow up around the G2 class storm. So that uh, might be a time to see some auroras if you're the uh, aurora watcher type there. I, here in Northern California, going to have uh, cloudy and rainy skies. So probably won't see much of anything. Uh, but look for auroras there over the next couple nights as that CME uh, enters into... Uh, and has effect there on the planet. Look like some aurora activity stirring up right now. Uh, nothing major, but uh, this will definitely kick up here over the next couple nights. Flare threat still uh, looks like about 55% chance for M flare. These guys showing 20% for an X flare, but uh, I don't really see that much of a threat there. I, I do see some further M flare activity from this sunspot, but uh, nothing of an X flare nature for now. Really not too concerned with this area down here either. As uh, far as the Storm Prediction Center for severe weather, little thunderstorm risk there, it looks like, across a portion of the Sacramento and San Joaquin Valley, down down across uh, Los Angeles, southward as well, just thunderstorm activity. We do have a bunch of rain coming in. It's raining right now. A um, lot, uh, lot of rain in a series of storm systems coming in here over the next couple days, and this looks to be a repeat pattern, so... Southern California, you know, on these La Nina years like we're having, normally are much drier, but they've been getting a sufficient amount of rainfall, even more so than the typical El Nino pattern that brings them, you know, the, the wet storms here in the wintertime. It's just been a kind of an odd year. But uh, it looks to stay wet. Storm door remains open out there for the uh, uh, California area. Um, update here on Chomper. So I got them here at home right now. Um, I picked them up. I'm actually en route here to take them to a more qualified surgical uh, vet facility. And I'll provide more updates on that here in a little bit. He's actually alert, walking around. He's able to uh, get a little bit, uh, pass a little bit of uh, fluids there. Um, but he still he hasn't been operated on yet. Um, and these folks where I just picked him up at are a small town kind of vet. Uh, but the bill is big. I just, yeah, the picking them up, folks. I'm very thankful there for the um, the uh, GoFundMe account donations that are coming in. If you can continue to help out, that would be very appreciated because this was crazy. Um, you know, they did have to drain his bladder. Uh, they couldn't go through the normal way because of, uh, you know, blockage there. He's got 12 kidney stones. I got the x-ray image as well. Absolutely crazy. I'll have to show you guys that if you want to see uh, a little bit later on in a post. But um, I, I got to take him right now after this update. I just wanted to stop by real quick, um, shave. I, I haven't really had any sleep in the last couple nights. 
uh, give him a little rest here at home, and then I'm going to be en route there to uh, take him to a very well qualified uh, surgical team uh, that you know can perform these uh, operations there with a, a much higher survival rate than than a small town vet. They did good. I think they saved his life. They got all the toxins out of him, gave him some powerful anti or uh, um, antibiotics. Can't remember the name of it. It wasn't amoxicillin. It was something way powerful. Uh, and he's way more alert, uh, very thankful uh, that he's doing good, but he's not out of the woods yet. He's got to have surgery there to get those stones out. Um, and, you know, man, pretty crazy. But I'm very thankful. I wanted to provide you guys a short update on where we're at. Um, if we can continue to share that at least, I still see some donations coming in there. Uh, it more than likely is probably going to be over that amount because uh, I just dropped... Uh, um, I'll, I'll explain it here in, in a future post. Um, I'll post it and uh, show you guys what what I just paid for an overnight visit uh, and like two days of service, soft tissue surgery. There's like 50 items on there and it's like, wow. But it's all life-saving here for the dog. And man, without you folks, I, uh, there's no way I could take care of that at all. Uh, I was definitely not prepared for something like this. Um, so please keep sharing the GoFundMe account. Maybe we can get some more donations in there to help cover up this, um, you know, it's a high risk surgery coming up here for Chomper. Uh, but I'm going to upload this video, make a thumbnail, and then I'm on my way. I'll provide an update when I get there. Have a good day, folks. Happy New Year. And uh, we'll see you guys back out here later this evening for the Thursday night update. Take care.